This is Joanne, and she's a collector of sorts. Over the last five years or so, she's amassed a menagerie of creatures that you wouldn't find very easily here in the UK. And over the next few weeks, I'm being allowed through the gates and into Joanne's weird world of wonderful animals. Today we're going to experience an animal usually found in the opposite hemisphere to the one that we're in right now. More specifically in Tasmania, but there's nothing devilish about these guys. The red-necked wallaby is closely related to the kangaroo, but they're much shorter at around half the size. With mostly brown or grey fur with a distinctive patch on their upper back, the red-necked wallabies first arrived in the UK in zoos and private collections. So you've got quite a... Uh... I don't know, what would you call them? A herd of wallabies. A now mob. you can sort of see <laughs> them. A They're mob all of wallabies. sort of um, ganging up behind us um, out trying to get the carrots. But us Brits have not seen very many wallabies no. in the flesh, have we? So and the first question people say to us is, how do they get on with our English weather? Yeah. The answer to that is fine. You'll see mm. them bouncing about in the snow and the ice. They don't worry. If it's too wet and rainy, they go inside. Mm. If, you look, if you look at the animal, they are mostly leg. They are, yeah. I would say, up to 60% back leg, aren't yeah. they? And the power in them legs are unbelievable. Aside from powerful hind legs and tail, another distinctive characteristic of a wallaby is how it carries its young. Female wallabies will carry their babies or joeys in a pouch between their legs. And if you're lucky and the mum isn't bouncing in the opposite direction, the curious baby joey will pop its head out of the pouch to have a peek at what's going on outside. We've got quite a few, um, at least four to five pregnant in here at the moment with wow. joeys in the pouch. So what actually happens yeah. is they're continually pregnant, but it's almost like a small maggot. Yeah. And it will crawl, they'll lick a path up their belly yeah, yeah, and hopefully yeah. the maggot will crawl up the path, go into the pouch and attach. They just grow and grow inside. Eventually, about eight months, they'll, they'll come out running about mm. until they're too big. But you will get a whole leg, a whole arm, a whole tail until literally they just cannot fit in. And you see them pull the pouch out and just jump inside. Wow. But until the mum's decided that they've got two sets of milk. So one for the joey inside yeah. and one outside for the larger joey. Mm -hmm. But they will base it on the weather. The weather's not right, it's too cold, it's windy, it's raining. They'll hold back. Mm. So is that quite heavy then for the mum when they're in I there? would imagine so. Um, when they go bouncing around like that, obviously baby's got to hold on tight inside, but their muscles keep it all together and hold hold them in. Do you reckon it's a bumpy ride for the baby? I would imagine so, yeah. but I would imagine they were used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously they've grown up in there bouncing about. They, yeah. um, they don't seem to worry. As long as mum's on the move, they dive back inside safely. Catching a glimpse of a baby joey is a rare sight in itself, but join us in a bit where we'll meet one of the oldest and rarest wallabies in Joanne's weird world of wonderful animals. on we entered Joanne's weird world of wonderful animals to meet her wallabies. That's incredible, look you can see his little head there. Joanne has kept wallabies for years and one of her first, Whisper, is still happily with the mob. Whisper is easily told apart from the other animals by her distinctive nose. We had a smaller enclosure in the beginning, thinking keep them in a small enclosure, we can go in and out and keep them friendly coming up to us. Yeah. They just decided to spook and ran at the fence and kept bouncing and bouncing and she was covered in blood. So we stayed up all night long, went running off, getting Harris fencing, mm. made a bigger enclosure and from that day on they're completely settled and relaxed with us now. Mm. 
these are your pets, yeah, essentially. Definitely. You love these animals. Um, our biggest comment from 90% of people are how friendly the animals are yeah. because it's not a zoo. It started as pets. We're here all day, every day. Mm. You don't get an animal that close or that relaxed with you without spending time. A lot of people say, how do you do it? Time. That's mm. the only answer is yeah. time. But if these exotic pets weren't exciting enough, we're about to meet one of the rarest members of the mob. Well, so far we've seen a lot of the mob and they all look very similar, but there's one special wallaby that looks a lot different. He's called different. Jack and he's albino. He's completely white. He needs sunscreen when it's out and sunny, so I think we should try and poke our noses yes, um, around and find the wake elusive him up, Jack. Please. Through a rare genetic mutation, some redneck wallabies are entirely white because of a lack of melanin. That's the pigment that gives skin, hair and eyes their colour. This means that they are very sensitive to sunlight, which can affect their survival rates in the wild. Obviously with Jack being albino, he, he has a bit of special care, does he? Um, only his suntan cream and attention, basically, because mm. that's... Jack loves nothing more but cuddle and a bit of attention. So the, the albino gene um, is, is recessive. So if you put two albinos together, there's not a great... Not necessarily. It's a small chance that it will be up, yeah. passed on. Yeah. Wow. So have you ever encountered a, another albino wallaby? We've had one. We had one female from a brown mum. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, that was about three years ago. We She went to live somewhere else. We sold her on. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, out of six years we've only ever had one albino mm. so each year when the babies start popping out we're looking to see the color yeah, like yeah, i yeah. said sometimes they're just pink because they've got no hair and a couple of times yeah, we've yeah. been sure and then the next time they pop out their brain <laughs> jack is one of joanne's very first wallabies and his distinctive appearance makes him stand out from the crowd which means he's the subject of many selfies Jack, our albino, is obviously the man. Yes. And, um, yeah, this is his little group of women. It's, there he is, uh, look. He does just look like he's looking over his land, quite yeah, he's, proud uh, of Quite all the superior, work that he's done. and he checks yeah. everybody and who should be here and who shouldn't. Yeah. We definitely. do get um, a lot of ducks that come in and try and pinch the food, and he do seems to be there on Fiat. <laughs> Although they are very British wallabies. It is a taste of what goes on down under Definitely. right here in the UK, isn't it? Definitely. Next time, we'll get up close and personal with a strange rabbit-like creature usually found in South America.